welcome. In this video, we're going to be learning about active transport. Now, this is a phospholipid bilayer, and we can say that this is a cell surface membrane. So we have the inside of the cell and the outside. We know molecules can go through the cell membrane in different ways. In this video, we're going to be focusing on specifically active transport. So let's say we have these molecules and we want them to go from low concentration to high concentration. In other words, against their concentration gradient. For this to happen, one requirement is a carrier protein. So this guy wants to go from a low concentration to a high concentration so he can be with the rest of his friends. The molecule will first bind to the carrier protein. Then, after binding, nothing special happens yet. Now a molecule of ATP is required. Now usually, if this was facilitated diffusion, the carrier molecule would have changed shape. However, in this case, it's not going to change shape because we're going from low to high. So we have to force it to change shape. In this case, we need some energy. So a molecule of ATP comes along. The ATP gets hydrolyzed and releases lots of energy. It also breaks down into ADP and inorganic phosphate. The energy that was released is used to change the shape of the carrier protein. Now the molecule can leave and join the rest of its friends. The ADP molecule is also released from the carrier protein. This causes the carrier protein to go back to its original shape, ready to go again. Now this was an example of direct active transport. In this scenario, the carrier protein had to directly use ATP to move a molecule from a low to a high concentration or against its concentration gradient. So this was one type of active transport. The other type does not use ATP directly. This is called co-transport. Let's have a look at how this works. So here we have one type of molecule. It has a low concentration outside the cell and a high concentration inside the cell. Here's the other type of molecule. This time, there's a higher concentration outside and a low concentration inside the cell. Let's say the red dot wants to move from outside the cell to inside the cell. To do that, we're going to use co-transport. So we can see the blue dots are going from a high to a low concentration in this direction. That means it will simply come and take its place into the carrier protein. This should be enough to change the shape of the carrier protein by itself. Since it's moving by diffusion, this should be enough to change the carrier protein's shape. ATP is not required. But before the carrier protein changes shape, the red dot, who's moving from a low to a high concentration, will quickly take its place in as well. Since there's a space available for it, the red dot will also take a place within the carrier protein. Now, the carrier protein will change shape and both molecules will be released on the other side. Once released, the carrier protein goes back to normal. So one molecule went down its concentration gradient and another molecule went against its concentration gradient. And we did not have to use ATP directly to do this. So if we didn't use ATP energy, does this count as active transport? Answer is yes, because ATP was used somewhere in the cell to create this concentration gradient for the blue dots in the first place. Had there not been a concentration gradient for the blue dots, the red dots would not have been able to move either. Let's see how this is put into practice. We'll take a trip to our favorite organ system in the whole body, the small intestine. Here, we have the small intestine and the blood, and between them, we have a layer of epithelial cells. We're going to see how glucose goes from the small intestine into the epithelial cell, and then from there into the blood. Okay, so here we have the blood capillary, epithelial cell, and small intestine. Now in the small intestine, you can find glucose, amino acids, and sodium ions. These are all contents of the food that the person ate. 
the epithelial cell also has a large store of glucose molecules. Our goal is to get glucose into the blood. We can see that there's a high concentration of glucose in the epithelial cell and a low concentration in the small intestine. That means glucose has to move into the epithelial cell by some sort of active transport. Okay, so this is a sodium potassium pump. Over here, we have a co-transporter, just like in the previous example. And here, we have a glucose carrier protein. So, let's begin the process. The sodium potassium pump pumps out three sodium ions and pumps in two potassium ions. It uses ATP to do this. The reason it does this is so that the concentration of sodium inside the epithelial cell drops. Now we can say that the concentration of sodium in the small intestine is higher than that of the epithelial cell. Because there's a concentration gradient, sodium ions will try to diffuse in. So now we've created a concentration gradient for sodium ions. Because of this, they'll try to diffuse in using the co-transporter. So a sodium ion molecule takes its place, and while it's doing that, a glucose molecule quickly gets in there as well. By the end of it, glucose has managed to get from the small intestine into the epithelial cell. Once in the cell, it will leave by facilitated diffusion using the glucose carrier and go into the blood, where it will be taken away to all the body cells. Now notice glucose went from low to high concentration. So it moved using active transport. And this was done with the help of a co-transporter. So it did not use ATP directly. However, we know active transport requires ATP. So where was the energy used? Right here. ATP was used to create the concentration gradient, without which sodium ions and therefore glucose molecules will not have been able to transfer into the cell. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.